Hey y'all, how's it going? I am Joy, and welcome once again to more of our visual stories. Short stories, horror stories, scary stories. Scary short stories. There we go. Perfect alliteration, just took me three episodes to get to it. Anyway, welcome back to this wonderful series of the interactive horror stories. We finished up the doll and after funeral. So next up, I'm going to skip Crystal Skull and just go to Evil Beneath the Ground. And then in our next one, we should be doing Crystal Skull 1 and 2. So without any further ado, let's see just what kind of evil lies beneath the ground. You are a goth university student with no friends. You join a school trip to a lake and the forest near it. If you decide to wander in the forest at night, you will find bare footprints. Those are coming from a black hole with a ladder. Will you descend down? Logic would say no. But, um, per the usual with these, I will do both and try to find both endings. So here we go. You are a young university student who identifies as goth. You are a lonely person. People think that you want to be alone, but in fact you couldn't find someone you felt affinity. Everyone is so distant from you. Nobody you know listens to the same music that you love. You heard about a university field trip to a lake and a forest around it in autumn. There would be a picnic. Also, alcohol is permitted, and you could bring your own drinks. You join the field trip. Not only maybe you could make new friends, but you also love nature. Especially when it's a cold season. Honestly, same. Hiking in the woods when it's fall is amazing. I love it. But of course, you couldn't make new friends once again. During the two hours of bus travel, you found out that every other student who joined the trip were already friends. They simply ignored you. You also didn't approach them. As a result, all you could do during the bus trip was looking outside the window or playing games on your phone, while you listened to their joyful laughters. You have mixed feelings about this picnic by the lake. You can't feel yourself as part of the joyful group who are enjoying the nature trip. After having a picnic barbecue, they played a game with a ball in which they formed a circle and tried not to let the ball touch the ground. Everyone participated in the game except for you. But you enjoy the nature trip somehow. As said before, you love nature. You took pictures of the lake with your phone, and you don't plan to post the pictures anywhere, though. There's a huge forest near the picnic area. You have always found peace in the green of the forests. After the sun set, people begin to light a campfire and drink. People around your age generally prefer beer, but you don't like it. You feel it overfills your stomach and causes nausea after two cans. Instead, you prefer stronger drinks, so today you brought a bottle of red wine and a wine glass. They gathered around the campfire while you drank your wine alone away from them. A handsome guy brought his guitar from the bus and began playing it around the fire while you have finished your second glass of wine. Campfire and moon illuminate the darkness, since the sun has already set. There are about five hours for the picnic to end, and you'll be going back to the city with buses. He's playing a calming song. You might join the group, but you'll also feel a strong urge to have a walk in the dark forest. Ugh. Okay, our first choice. Um, I will be smart and join the group. You approach the group. Two girls notice you, and they open a space for you to sit between them. One of them is blonde. The other has long black hair. They wear colorful clothes, contrasting with your black outfit. Um, so how are you? Blonde girl says, we are fine. They neither say anything else, nor ask how you are. Okay, well, this is awkward. I'm just not going to talk to him. You can stay with the other students or go to the forest. Um, I'll stay. Nothing interesting happens in the rest of the day. You finish your bottle of wine, and you can't make any friends as usual. When the time comes, you get on the bus and go back to the city. Yes, it's a lame ending, but at least you're still alive and human. The end. The game has three endings. Ooh, okay. Three endings. This might be a longer episode then, huh? Let's go.
Let's go to the forest this time. You stand up and wander away from the picnic. You feel the call of the dark forest. So you walk along the path into the forest. The trees are high and still green. Maybe they stay green in all seasons. You don't know, your field is not biology. The soil is wet and muddy. It must have rained before your group arrived at the lake. You leave boot prints on the soil as you walk. There are no clouds in the sky. Full moon and stars illuminate the forest, but that's not enough for your eyes. You turn on the flashlight of your phone. There is an app for it too. There's an app for everything. Yay, technology. You can't see clearly, but notice rabbits in the distance. Naturally, they run from you as they notice your presence. You begin to think that you might have gone too far from the picnic, but there is nothing interesting in the picnic area, and you somehow feel like the darkness of the forest is your friend. Your only friend. Hmm, well, let's continue on the path then. We've already made it here, so let's continue. You continue on the forest path. After a few minutes, you notice footprints in the soil. They seem to belong to a human with bare, big feet. Probably a man. The prints cross the path. Ooh. Um. Hmm. I will follow him. You follow the footprints on the soil. They keep changing directions. You find yourself at an elevation and the prints stop here. Whoever was walking, he didn't leave prints those you could follow anymore. He might have gone anywhere as he didn't follow a single direction. Um, well, we came this far. I guess let's go try to track the monster down like any good Winchester would. You decide to go to the place where he comes from. After a long walk, you find yourself at a hole. There is a lid and a long rope near it. The man clearly comes from the hole. <laughs> His footprints prove it. When you hold your phone's light into the black hole, you can see that there is a ladder inside. You can't see the end of the hole from your position, though. As a curious and drunk boy, you feel a strong urge to descend. Well, we shall descend into the dark hole with whatever is awaiting us. As you need to use both of your hands to climb down, you put your phone into your jeans pocket, turning off the light, and you start climbing down. After a few seconds, moon and stars above are no longer illuminating what you see. You are in pitch black and the ladder still continues. Creepy. Finally, your feet touch the ground. You are so distant from the forest that you can't see the entrance of the hole where you are. You carefully get on your two feet, and you can see nothing yet. Turn on the light. The place where you are is made of concrete. There's a long corridor in front of you. It is narrow, about a meter wide. Not very high, and there's only a few centimeters between your head and the ceiling of the corridor. You smell a terrible odor. It's a mixture of feces and something that you can't understand. There are three doorless holes along the concrete corridor, making three rooms to discover. Um, let's just go in order then, I guess. Uh, examine the first room. There is an empty wooden coffin. A mirror hangs on the concrete wall. A bloody razor and a black whip stand in front of the mirror. In the mirror, you see a reflection and the terror on your face. Okay, well, a uh, second room. That was the fun room, apparently. You are shocked to find a chained woman in the second room. The chain is tied to her ankle. She looks as if she's in her 40s, too weak, her bones are noticeable, and has pale skin with lots of scars. She's on her knees. She's naked, and her body is lightly hairy, except for her pubic area, which is quite hairy. Contrasting her body hair, her head is shaved. She stinks, not only the smell of feces, but also it looks like she wasn't washed for years. She screams as you point the light to her. Dun dun dun. <sighs> um... I don't think she's in the position to talk, 
but okay, let's try it. Who are you? She doesn't answer your questions, but yells with despair. Help me, he keeps me here. I can tell that. Alright, well, let's try. You crouch down to her tied foot. There is no way that you can remove the bracelet from her ankle. You also notice that her pinky toe is missing. Ew. Uh, what happened to your toe? Let's not ask. Let's just try to find the key. You try to leave the room, but something you don't understand happens. At the exit of the room, you hit something that wasn't visible in front of you. Yes, you saw nothing in front of you, and yet you hit something. You fall onto the floor, and an invisible force carries you and repeatedly smashes your head into the wall. You hear the woman screaming as you black out. When you wake up, you find yourself lying on the concrete floor in pitch darkness. By the smell, you understand that you are in the same place. Whoever is keeping you captive, he stripped you from all clothes. You are naked and cold. There's a gag in your mouth, so you can't shout or communicate with the woman. She might be gagged too, for all you know. You stand up and try to walk away, but your ankle is tied with a chain. You can walk only in a chamber with one meter of radius. Your foot touches a metal bucket. It's probably where he expects you to... Ah, oh, what the heck. It's probably where he expects you to defecate. You lose all of your sense of time in here. You wait for an unmeasurable time for something to happen. You're thirsty and hungry. Sometimes you hear your phone ring. It is in a different room. The piano melody is It's the Fear by Within Temptation. An ironic name, considering your situation. They probably notice that you're missing and try to reach out. Especially your parents. They must have become mad. But naturally, you can't answer the call. Finally, you hear footsteps. You hear your captor coming to your room. You're unable to see anything. He takes your gag off. Apparently he has no problem with seeing in the pitch black. And you hear his voice. Drink. It belongs to an old man. A dominant, ordering voice. You'll feel the tip of a bucket to your lips. Uh, ask questions first. Who are you? I am your new master. You better behave well, as you're mine now. Now drink, or I won't give it to you again. Uh, yes sir. We drink. It is water that he's offering. You drink it. It's not the best water that you've had. It could have been taken from the lake, but you have no other choices, it seems. After you drink enough, he puts the bucket on the ground, and now he brings something else to your lips. Eat. You are too hungry to refuse him. You allow him to put the thing... <laughs> <clears throat> you allow him to put the thing in your mouth. It's meat, but raw. You would never eat raw meat, except for sushi. Not even. But now you chew it slowly. It is rabbit, he says. You swallow the meat, despite how it disgusts you. After you eat all that he gives you, he puts the gag on your mouth and leaves the room without saying another word. After a while, he comes back as you are lying on the floor. Stand up, he orders you. Yes, sir. You get on your two feet, clumsily. He grabs your body, and you feel two sharp fangs on your neck. He starts draining your blood. And now, you understand the true nature of your captor. You have no idea how long you've been a prisoner here. You're mostly alone in the room, doing nothing with a gag on your mouth. He occasionally comes back to feed you, and himself. Sometimes you hear loud sounds from the other room. He tortures the woman. She screams and begs for him to stop, but he doesn't. You hear a whip hit the naked flesh of the woman. But for some reason, he doesn't harm you. Only the woman. You haven't seen anything for a long time. You have no idea what he looks like. Sometimes you hear sobbing, but it doesn't belong to the woman. It belongs to the captor. And he cries loudly for some reason. Some day, or night, you have no idea anymore, he shows up and takes your gag off. I have done research about you. Learned everything about you. 
He says your name, which shocks you. We have some common points. We both like the dark. We are both outcasts, lonely souls in this world of darkness. I will make you an offer, only once, so make your decision wisely. I can make you an immortal like me. You will no longer be in chains. You will have a life, or unlife as it were, in the dark, just like you've always wanted. Or you can stay here, as a mortal, and wait for the day that you will die here, as my prisoner. Well, I see where our paths have diverged. This is where we get one of the two remaining endings, I believe, so... Uh, for those of you who do not know, I am a bit of a fan of the paranormal romance genre of novels. Christine Feehan is my favorite, and she has a series of Carpathian novels dealing with the whole vampire thing, but there's a difference between vampires and Carpathians. Now, if you would like one day in the future, maybe I will do a quick little summary and review of some of the various books and genres that I've read, but until then, just wanted to put that out there. I do love me some good vampire slash Carpathian hunter lore. So, one of the dreams that I used to have was meeting my life mate and converting over to his side and becoming truly immortal, as is what happens in the books. Don't judge me, I was reading them very late at night and it influenced my dreams, but anyway, <laughs> one, I want to be an immortal. Very well. Stand up. You stand up and allow your master to embrace you. You feel his fangs on your neck once again. But this time, he doesn't stop. You feel your whole body is getting drained. And soon, you lose consciousness. Hey! Everything turned red. Creepy. You open your eyes. You find yourself lying in a wooden coffin, but this time, you are able to see... There isn't any single light source in this concrete room, but you see your environment as if you're wearing night vision goggles. You're wearing your old clothes, and also gloves, so you can't see your skin. You have lost your hair. It has shed. Your old hair is on the coffin's part where you put your head. And you feel your face has changed, too. But the most significant change is an unbearable thirst. But not for water. Welcome to a new start, my child. You hear his voice. You look around the room, but you can't see him. There are two coffins and a mirror in the room. They think that our kind can't be seen on the mirror, but this is false. Take a look at yourself. You step outside the coffin and walk to the mirror. You are in terror with what you see. You don't carry a human face anymore. Your skin has scales like a snake. Its color is a light gray, almost white. Your ears are long and have pointy tips, and your eyes are all red. You slowly open your mouth to see sharp teeth. You scream, break down and cry in despair, and then you feel his hand, claw to be exact, on your shoulder. He stands on your back. Now you're able to see his hand. It is scaled just like your skin. Look at me. He orders you, and for some reason, you can't disobey your master. You involuntarily look at the mirror to see the immortal entity behind you. His body is tall, naked, and has a humpback. His skin is almost white and scaled, but his face, it is the ugliest thing that you have ever seen. It's the embodiment of evils. Torture, murder, rape, and envy. Envy for everything that is pretty and fair. I will teach you everything I know. Your new and only now, parent says with a hideous smile. The end. The game has three endings. Welcome to the unlife. Okay, well, we are going to uh, skip ahead to the other one. Um, and see what happens when we decide to not, so... Uno momento, por favor. Alrighty, uh, since we did the first and the second room, let's just go to the third and see what's in there. 
You see a chain tied to the wall. It has a bracelet at its end, and there are two metal buckets. They are both empty. You notice a metal key on the floor. Well, I can see where this is gonna go. I'll take the key. Alright, uh, back to the first room. Empty, when you see a reflection in the tear. Uh, go to the second room. Uh, there's the woman. Let's just try to save her. Uh, you crouch down to her tied foot, and with the key that you got, you unlock the bracelet. She is free. You also notice that her pinky toe is missing. What happened to your toe? He made me eat it. Ugh, oh, ew. Um, you hold the woman's hand and rush to the ladder. Your other hand holds your phone so that you can enlighten the corridor. But as you reach the ladders, you feel something hits your stomach. You can't understand it. You see nothing in front of you, but still there's something. Your phone falls to the ground and you can't see anything. The woman screams, oh no, he came. You feel something grabs you and smashes your head to the concrete walls. You then black out. Uh, you wake up and find yourself lying on the concrete, four in pitch darkness. Uh, the certificate, there's no sense of time, of course you can't answer the call. Uh, let's just drink it. Just eat it. It is rabbit. <laughs> you allow him to put the thing in your mouth. It's meat, but raw. Stand up. Yes, sir. and feeds himself. Doesn't harm you, only the woman. Hearing the whip hit the naked flesh. There's a long time. He cries loudly for some reason. Very sorry, learn everything about you. Common points. Only once to make a decision wisely. Alright, I can make you immortal like me. You will no longer be in chains and you'll have a life or unlife, as it were, in the dark, just like you've always wanted. Um, I want to stay human, since we already did the other one, so I want to stay human. Suddenly you feel a sharp pain on your shoulders, and you hear the loud sound of a whip. He whips you continuously, feeling zero empathy for the agony that you feel in your bare skin. You could have been made a predator like me. You chose to be a frick toy. You are mine to torment, do you understand? He shouts at you. He kicks you and leaves you sobbing on the floor. You can do nothing but hope that sweet death will come soon. But it never comes. The end. The game has three endings. Achievement unlocked. Imprisoned. Okay, well, that was delightful. Um, I'm gonna go and, uh, read some more of that, uh, paranormal romance now that I mentioned after um, <clears throat> all of that. So uh, I thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out the links in the description for my link to Twitter and my Discord server to become a loved one and connect with all of the amazing people in my community. And also the link to this entire playlist of spooky short stories that I will be making now that I have enough of them. Uh, next up, we will be taking on the Crystal Skull. I don't know if it'll be Crystal Skull 1 and 2 and 1, or just, you know, separate videos. Let me know which you would prefer down in the comments below. And again, as always, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.